Hi felters and welcome. So today we are going to do horses hooves. I'm doing quite a few horses at the moment so I thought I'd show you how to do hooves because it's been requested quite a bit. So I'm quite happy with the back leg of this um, grey horse and I've done that hoof and now I'm going to do the front leg. I wasn't so happy with the shape of the front leg but never mind I can, I've can. i got a lot to sort of adjust on him. He's sort of only halfway done. So let's get started. Um, to make up the hoof colour I had to mix two colours together because a lot of grey horses have a very sort of creamy coloured hoof and I was looking at his pictures <laughs> to move my tea out the way there because the wool goes everywhere when you do a bit of carding, lots of loose bits come out. So I mixed up, mixed up the colour, I do um, a video on carding if you wanted to see that in a bit more detail. So I take a piece of the wool that I've mixed up and I make it nice and long and thin and I've got wire right down to the bottom of that leg to make it nice and strong. And then you are just going to wrap it right around the base area. Don't worry about getting the slope of the hoof too much yet whilst you're wrapping. Just wrap it round. I like this mat because I can put the leg the other side and support it. Um, so just wrap it round and then start to attach it. So start felting it so that it just stays on first off. And then you can do quite a lot of needle felting upwards and this is going to help to get the flat surface at the bottom and you have to be very careful not to stab your fingers. So yeah, I've got quite a, a big thick needle, I think it's a 36 at least that one. Um, I've had it a long time and I really love it because if you've got armature you're going to be hitting it with the needle so it helps if you have a thicker needle because you're less likely to break it. So I was just doing, a see there the thick needle helps me with drawing the line so now I've attached it and it's on I start to draw the line on the hoof so the front of the hoof will be a lot higher up and the back of the hoof where the frogs are and the bulbs of the heel are on the horse you will drag it downwards and then here we are doing quite a lot of work on the bottom to get the nice flat bit and this it's not going to look hoof like yet so don't worry um, the first one is just to get the base of the hoof on and then I always do it in layers at least two layers sometimes three and I'm sorry that <laughs> He's pointing upwards. It's really hard to show you. We will do a close-up in a minute, but it's quite tricky to show you up close because I move him around so much when I'm doing the hoof. You have to get to all sides. Now this bit here where you're holding him on the mat, I am needle felting downwards right into the mat and I think that really, really helps. So you can't really see the line there. We'll see it a bit closer in a minute, um, but that hoof needs to be a little bit bigger now. So take another bit of wool this is all carded wool I only ever use carded really tops I use for um, the coats and manes and tails so I've taken a bit more I'm holding it there and just wrap it round and don't worry about getting more at the front than at the back when you felt it you can sort of felt it into the shape that you want it I don't end up with loads at the um, heel of the um, hoof so again because you've just added a bit, just try and attach it all before you uh, worry too much. And you can see there that is slightly higher at the front. And then you're going to, it's really tricky, sorry about the close up, I sort of go in and out of the picture. There you go. And there I'm sort of doing the line and dragging it down. And this is why the big needle helps because it won't break and it, it, it looks all big and clumpy at the moment don't worry about that so I draw the line attach it and then lots of felting from upwards to get the flat surface and then I'll swap to a finer needle to make it look a little bit better but it, there's a lot of moving around so here we go and watch your fingers and when I'm doing this bit I can really needle felt it in quite a bit sometimes and it firms up the um, pastern area because otherwise the hooves can be a bit wobbly so yeah so I'm doing quite a lot and it sort of just firms it all up all the way through see how far in that's going so I find quite a lot of upward felting works well 
and then now we're just gonna work round and, and neaten it up but as I said it is moving round all sides oh those little dogs uh, I've, I've been doing quite a lot of dogs lately so I look like the mad dog lady with the dogs watching me but they are very sweet that's my next video out so that'll be really good 24 dogs um, so just keep going round at all sides all angles and then in a minute I will hold it up um, hold the horse standing upright and that is when I sort of get the better angle with the front of the hoof still drawing the line because the line's still not defined so as I said it's higher at the front and it, it goes down lower to the back and there we go we'll put him on and this is where I get a much more defined outside area the angle should be at least about 40 40 45 degrees for the horse's hoof um, so it looks healthy a healthy angle for the horses so if you don't want it too sloping or too upright um, and this felting downwards helps get a, a sharp edge around the bottom so I had to come away from the close-up because it's so hard I just move him around constantly so <laughs> and I will swap to the finer needle once you get sort of further along you can start to really get all the little bits in I guess each hoof takes me a good 15 minutes on just the hoof. The legs, you know, they can take an hour each. So there we go. So he's got a bit of a line. Because it's a cream hoof, it's really tricky for you to see. I'll just show you on my Exmoor pony. So when I do, um, here's the... Exmoor pony I did so there's the grey hoof so there's a, a, a fairly good slope you could do more of a slope nice flat surface underneath so they stand up well then so this is an, the next leg and it's just uh, a different angle for you to have a watch at I thought I'd just video it from the side just whilst I talk to you so um, I do these hooves and then I do uh, clay hooves as well which are really good and really quite easy and certain horses they I had a horse that had really fine hooves and I was struggling to make the felted hooves look really fine and small so I did um, clay hooves so when I do my horse courses in January um, there's gonna be I'll probably do two types of two horses and go all the way through from start to finish and do the both types of hooves and try and get a lot more close-ups and obviously it'll be in a lot more the whole course will be in a lot more depth I'm gonna pop an email uh, down below if you want to sign up for that just uh, click on it and then add your email address so that when they eventually come out the first sort of 10 courses I do will probably be discounted so you can have a look at that and be one of the first to know. So um, I'll let you just watch the end of this if you want to. I hope that's helped. I was going to do a hooves, paws and claws. But really, I know that everybody just wants the hooves. So yeah, I hope this has helped. I've been doing quite a few horses lately for commissions. And in January, I shall be uh, doing the courses. So thanks for watching. You can watch to the end if you want. And the email is in the description below. So take care, felters. Thanks a lot. Bye.